God from Pastor Stephen, uh, Stephen Vargis. Amen. So uh, Pastor Stephen Vargis is from Florida and uh, he's the pastor of uh, Ocala Pentecostal Fellowship, Florida. And uh, he has been used by God in different places. Actually, uh, Pastor Stephen and uh, his wife were born and brought up in Delhi. Then they moved to Gulf countries and uh, now he's uh, uh, ministering uh, uh, in, in, in that uh, I mean, church at uh, Florida. And uh, we have to uh, welcome uh, dear Pastor uh, Stephen uh, Varghese uh, in our midst this morning. Uh, uh, let us all, I mean, uh, uh, put our hands together and welcome Pastor Stephen. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Stephen, actually, uh, you know, he speaks in, uh, uh, he can preach in English and Hindi and Malayalam also, even Malayalam also. But uh, today he is, I mean, speaking in English. And uh, some of you may be knowing uh, dear Rajamama, Rajama Andy, who is sitting there. Um, uh, she was attending in our one of our um, fasting prayer. You know, uh, she is from Dallas and uh, uh, you may be remembering uh, that Rajamama who is sitting there, then now uh, uh, he, I mean, uh, Pastor Stephen, uh, Stephen's wife is the daughter of uh, dear Rajamama and Rajamama is the uh, close friend of Andamandi also. Uh, we are so glad about that, amen. So this morning, let us all sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude. Now this is the time for uh, Pastor Stephen Vargis, amen. Thank you, Pastor Sankuti. I hope uh, you can all hear me. Yes. Thank yes. you. Greetings to one and all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a great joy to be with this wonderful fellowship. And uh, I'm really thankful to the pastor for extending this invitation to me to come and be part of uh, this fellowship, this virtual meeting, especially this first Sunday. Uh, when we are all together, when we have all stepped into a new year, 2021. So, I have to say that I and uh, I'm also happy that uh, all the dear ones uh, who are here, uh, they're all being praying and uh, prayerfully entering into this new year. I'm also thankful for my um, mother-in-law, mummy, who is also attending this meeting. Without much delay, I'd like to take your attention to the word. I'm also thankful to the brother who shared from the Sam, as well as to the worship team who led us into a wonderful time of praising and worshiping God. May God bless you all. Uh, very quickly, before I turn your attention to the uh, passage from where I would like to share with you, let's take a moment to look to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask God's dear presence to continue to help us uh, even as we meditate uh, upon God's word. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for your marvelous presence, which is with every single one of us. Though we are seated in different homes, different situations, we are going through different circumstances of our life, but we thank you because uh, the sovereign God, the all omnipotent God who is present everywhere all the time, Lord, your presence would continue to speak to all of the dear ones of God, no matter what they go through, no matter what the apprehensions, fears, or what they go through this morning time, Lord, you would speak uh, through the word and let that bring about changes, let that bring about transformation, let that bring about breakthroughs into their lives of God. We thank you and praise you for listening to our prayers. We want to give you all the glory in the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Very quickly, I'd like to take your attention to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, and the passage for our meditation is uh, uh, from verse 16 onwards up to 21. Isaiah uh, chapter 16, uh, uh, sorry, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 16 to 21. I don't know how, what's the general trend, I do, I don't know if anybody reads in between or do you want me to read? I can read it. Or if anybody is going to take the initiative to read, I'll be happy to do, you know, allow you to do that. Um, shall I wait or shall I go ahead and read? Pastor, we have a beautiful girl by the name Elsa. And wow. I think she Please go ahead. So um, is it 16 to 21? Uh, no, Isaiah 43, 16 to 21. Okay. <clears throat> but now, oh, sorry. 
Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army the warrior. They, lay they lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not that the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it, is, now it springs forth. Do not perceive it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I will give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, you know, I've entitled my message uh, as new beginnings. We are into a new year. This is the first week. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's always good. You know, every year which starts, we have so many uh, new hopes, new resolutions to start with. You know, many a times we start with resolutions, uh, uh, you know, but might not end up uh, with keeping up those resolutions, you know. Some, somebody said it this way, the new resolution, uh, the resolution for me this year is uh, not to make any new resolutions, you know. So there are people who make uh, resolutions not to make any resolutions because they're not able to keep it. So this new year, when we have uh, ahead of us, uh, let us look for new beginnings. And that's why I've entitled my message as new beginnings. When we are in the Lord, this is a passage which came to Isaiah the prophet where he is receiving this prophetic message to uh, pass on to the people. Now, when you read the book of Isaiah, uh, it, it's a prophetic word. It's a, it's a big book. One of the major prophets uh, who have written uh, extensively to the children of Israel. Uh, there are different understandings. Uh, what is the time period in which he wrote? Uh, uh, what were these prophecies? Were they meant uh, uh, for which era of time? It's, you know, there are so many understandings about it. But generally, we understand that Isaiah was a prophet who was being used among the Israelites, prophesying about the Assyrian captivity and thereafter the restoration of Israel from the Assyrians, the restoration of the Israelites from the Assyrians. Actually, uh, from chapter 40 onwards, it's a general understanding that uh, there are uh, uh, scholars who think uh, uh, it speaks about uh, the restoration when the children were uh, children of Israel were in Babylon also. No matter what the situation is, one thing uh, is which is very clear and vivid is that the children of Israel are in captivity. And this passage also speaks uh, of the restoration of the Israelites. So... This passage uh, where uh, Aisha is prophesying, uh, he's speaking to the children of Israel and he's reminding from the past. But he's also speaking of something which is going to happen. And he's also asking the children of Israel to do something about it. So my, my message this morning time is going to be focused on those three things. Uh, you know, doing something or re being reminded of something uh, some new things which we need to do or some new resolutions or some new commitments which we need to make and to stand on them. I'll just uh, put out those as points to you one by one after another. I I'm sorry, uh, um, you know, Pastor reminded me about making a, a PowerPoint slide. I, I, I couldn't uh, prepare it, but if you would uh, carefully, uh, you know, listen to my message, I'll just uh, point it out in points so that you can keep it with you. Uh, so the, the passage starts with, the passage which we read starts with uh, in Isaiah 43, verse 16. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. Now that verse, which we read over here, speaks something from the history of the Israelites. We are all familiar what Isaiah is pointing out to, especially to the children of Israel, if they were to hear, they would immediately be reminded of their forefathers going, uh, uh, you know, being called out of uh, uh, the, the, the land of slavery that was in Egypt and being taken into the promised land. 
under the leadership of Moses and Aaron, when they started their journey, that, that, that part of history is mentioned in the book of Exodus. You know, even as they started their journey, the, they, there were many hopes. There were many, many, many thoughts within their minds uh, that uh, they're going to begin a new journey, a land to which they're going to go with, uh, where they will have freedom. No more will they be compelled to live a life as a slave, but rather they would be moving into a land of freedom. With that promise, even as they start their uh, journey, with just three days into their journey, they reach a place where they come uh, to a point where the journey is almost coming to an end. And that's not all. They're being, pers you know, the, the uh, Pharaoh and his entire army is coming after to them to take them captives once again and take them back into into the into their land or Egypt as slaves with this in in your mind here is Moses and Aaron they are standing in the presence of God and Moses uh, at this time especially in the book of Exodus chapter 14 you can read this Moses is put in a situation where his own people who started with him uh, they are now accusing him. Why have you brought us to this place? Were there not graves in Egypt that you brought us to this place to die in this place? Why do you want to kill us? You know, these were accusations which were rising against uh, Pharaoh, uh, against Moses uh, and Aaron. At that time, Moses could, could not do anything. He just uh, cried, wept in the presence of God. And God makes a way. You know, this is uh, uh, the, the, the passage which we read. You know, this is the verse that reminds us of that incident. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea. You know, the, for the first time we read that the seas parted. All that Moses did was stretch forth the rod that was given in his hand. He, he didn't even command. There was a wind that, uh, you know, swept over that sea. It parted and they walked on the dry land. And we know the rest of history, uh, how they crossed over, how in that same uh, sea or in the same path which the enemy wanted to persuade got destroyed. Let me say something from that before I proceed further. You know, 2020 started with great hopes. People thought everything is going to be good, everything is going to be fine, and uh, things are going to be normal. Nobody ever in their wildest of dreams ever thought uh, with March, uh, things are going to change forever. You know, it's something like, uh, you know, the Israelites starting their journey just uh, three months or three days into their walk, uh, coming to a point of standstill, not understanding, going through a, a turmoil, going through a situation where they don't know to, how to go ahead or how to proceed further. We are still not through with it. We are still in the season of pandemic. We are still in the season where we hear of news is that it's going to, you know, uh, come with a new mut mutation and, you know, all kinds of things happening around us. But in the midst of this, where do we find hope? Where do we have an understanding that God is going to give us a new beginning, especially to the children of God who trust and hope in him? So here is the word. We see there's a new way that is going to get, that, that was getting created for the Israelites. But for this new way to get created, all that they had to do is trust in the Lord. This, this morning time, even as I speak to you, we have entered into a new year, but there are so many thoughts and fears and apprehensions that we still carry at the back of our mind. Of course, we want new things to happen, but how will that happen? For, what, for that to happen, there is something that you need to do, and that is mentioned in verse 18. I'll read that for you. In the same uh, uh, chapter, verse, uh, 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 chapter 43, verse 18, it says, forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. Forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. Can we say that? Forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. For us to have a new beginning, there is something that we need to do. There is something that the children of Israel needed to do. There is something that they need to do uh, from the depth of their hearts and say, Lord, I'm not going to dwell on the former things. I'm not going to dwell on the past. Well, is that a right thing to forget everything? 
No. God is asking us not to forget everything. In fact, uh, the Bible reminds us, do not forget from where you were, you know, uh, dug out or from where you were taken out or, or do not forget the former things. Many times it's reminded in the Bible. So then what is Isaiah trying to remind uh, the children of Israel over here? What is he asking them to forget? In fact, uh, I, I, I believe it this way. What Isaiah was trying to say is forget uh, what your forefathers did. Forget those ways of life uh, when they, even after knowing God, were not willing to follow God or willing to follow after godly ways. Forget the bitter past. Forget uh, the bitter things. Uh, forget those situations uh, which you brought, which brought you into slavery. Even under the Azidian, uh, you know, uh, uh, term when uh, uh, king uh, kings came from Azidia and took them, took the uh, ten tribes of Israel into captivity. You know, we know the reason. When Israel was no more willing to follow Yahweh, rather they were willing to worship idols. So what uh, uh, the, the prophet is trying to tell the people is forget those things. You're not supposed to worship the old ways of, or walk in the old ways of life. Uh, rather, commit yourself for something new. Following God, following godly ways, uh, following godly things. The first point that I want to make over here is uh, to respond to new things. You know, you need to reposition yourself. To receive a new beginning, you need to reposition yourself. You know, uh, I'm not a psychologist, but uh, uh, psychologists, those who try to deal with uh, 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 different kinds of, uh, uh, you know, mental sicknesses. Uh, in, in depression, uh, they say, it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. You are in depression, and then uh, you, th there is a time where you where you are weak in your body, and then there is a time that you try to use some of the coping mechani mechanisms, uh, and you are not able to uh, cope up with those mechanisms, uh, and then you feel guilty that you are not able to overcome it, and then again you fall into the trap of depression. Depression. This goes on. This is a vicious cycle. For new things to happen in your life, the first thing that you need to do is reposition yourself. Reposition yourself. This morning time, you know, I'm reminded of what Paul says in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 onwards. Can we just very quickly go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 onwards? And I would request somebody to read that. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 onwards. Not that I have, the, not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect, but I pressed on to make it it my own because Christ Jesus has made me His own. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, the straining forward to what lies ahead. I and press forty also. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Look at what Paul is doing. Absolutely. आपको अपने जीवन में यदि नई बातों को पाना है तो जैसे प्रेरित पौलुस यहां फिलिपियों की पत्री उसके तीन अध्याय उसके 13 पद में कह रहा है कि मैं पुरानी बातों को भुला देता हूं I forget forgetting what is in the past verse 13 says uh, forgetting what is behind forgetting what is behind 2020 has passed there may be good memories keep those memories but there would be bitter experiences there would be experiences uh, of somebody losing their, their job, somebody losing their dear ones, somebody going through traumatic experiences, uh, you know, challenges. What uh, Aisha says over uh, in Aisha is forget. Forget those bitter experiences. Forget those uh, 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 words which the enemy tried to bring into your mind and say you're not worthy. 
Forget those experiences and words which the enemy tried to speak into ears and say, you're not capable. Don't dwell on those things. Those are not for you. Rather, strain towards something which is ahead. So the first thing that I already mentioned to you is uh, Paul is also saying in similar words and he's saying the same thing. He's saying, I'm forgetting what is behind. I'm forgetting what is behind. I'm straining. And verse 14 says, I press on towards the goal. Speak to yourself and say, in 2021, I have a goal. I have a goal in Christ. Speak to yourself and, I, and say, I have a goal. I, my family has a goal. My church has a goal. This uh, morning time, even as I speak to you, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, let not the enemy try to distract you from the goal that is set ahead of you. Reposition yourself. Realign yourself. Put yourself in the place where the Lord expects you. If you have drifted away from the will of God, if you have drifted away in areas or places where you are far away from the will of God, speak to yourself and say, I'm going to reposition myself. I'm going to realign myself for new beginnings. I'm going to break that vicious circle. I'm going to break that vicious circle and not allow the enemy to continue to you know, work upon me and keep me in failure. Rather, I'm going to break free from that. I'm going to come out of it uh, and I'm going to walk in the newness of life. So the first thing that I mentioned over here is forgetting, not dwelling on what the past was uh, speaking to you. And verse 17 says, uh, who drew out, uh, 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 this is in Isaiah 43, who drew out the chariots and the horses, the army and the reinforcements together and they lay there never to rise again, is extinguished, uh, snuffed out like a wick. You know, you might ask me, if you re reposition yourself, what good is that going to do? Will not the enemy follow you? Will not uh, uh, he come after you? Look at what happened to the Israelites. The enemy said, I'm going to catch them. I'm going to take them captive. I'm going to destroy them. Jesus said something very similar. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Let me tell you, uh, the Israelites thought they're going to be captives again. And they're going to go back uh, and serve Pharaoh. They're going to continue to do the building of the bricks and all those things. But there is something very, very unusual. There's a miracle that is happening. Let me tell you, if you decide to strain forward, let me tell you, the path that you're going to take in Christ, the enemy will not be able to follow that path. God had two purposes. The first, freedom for his people. The second thing, the same path in which he was going to bring about freedom, a new path that was going to be made for them, that same path was going to be the path of destruction for the enemy. परमेश्वर ने समुद्र के बीच में उनके लिए राह खोला उनको दूसरी तरफ पहुंचाया फेरो ने बोला आइए हम उन, उनको उनका पीछा करें वो भी समुद्र में निकल पड़े लेकिन देखते हैं कि समुद्र वहां पर वापस आ जाती है फेरो और उसकी पूरी सेना वहां पर नष्ट हो जाती है द सेम पाथ लेट मी टेल यू डोंट यू एवर थिंक आवर गॉड इज अ माइटी गॉड इफ यू थिंक दैट सम ऑफ योर फेलियर्स आर गोइंग टू फॉलो यू इनटू 2021 my dear brothers and sisters, the new path that you are going to take, that could be the same path for the destruction of your enemy. Some of those things that are going to follow you. The word of God came to Moses. This Egyptian you see today, you are not going to see them anymore. Can you repeat that for yourself and say to yourself, the enemy that tried to follow me in 2020 is not going to follow me because my God is mighty enough. He's going to bring an end to the Egyptian. 
No, you know, instead of Egyptians, you can put down anything that has been trying to, uh, you know, follow you or that that's trying to put you down in 2020. See, speak to yourself and say, that's not going to follow me in 2021. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning time, even as I speak to you, the Lord is going to bring about a miraculous deliverance into some of your lives, into, into some of your situations, uh, if you're willing to step forward in faith, in faith. So I was speaking about, uh, uh, you know, being in the presence of God, repositioning yourself for new things. The second thing that I wanted to bring, uh, uh, bring to you is you need to get a revelation from the Lord for new things. For new beginnings to happen, the first thing that I said is reposition yourself for new things. Second is receive a revelation from the Lord for new things. What is receiving a revelation from the Lord for new things? How can you receive a revelation? What could be a revelation that can happen in regard to the Israelites? When we read about the Israelites, it says, uh, uh, in verse 19, it says, see, I'm going to do a new thing. Now it springs, springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a new way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Now, there is a, there's, a, there's a verse which says, see, I'm going to do a new thing. When we read that verse, there would be many thoughts or imaginations that might go through our mind. What could be this new thing? What could be this new thing? The Lord made a path uh, uh, for the Israelites in the Red Sea. Again, we read there was a similar situation where the Lord made a path through the River Jordan. You know, when Joshua and the Israelites were crossing over into the Promised Land, the Jordan was flowing ahead of them and there was no path available for them. But again, they walked uh, on dry land through the Jordan River also. So we may expect something similar in our times. We may be saying, we may be thinking, okay, God is going to again part ways for me. God is again going to make a new path for me in the middle of the river. That may be the expectation. But here, Aisha is speaking to the people and saying, you need to receive a revelation. You need to receive a new thing. What could be the new thing? You know, when I was pondering upon this and I was thinking about this, this is what the Lord brought to my mind. You know, our God is a God who can make a path in the sea. And if required, he can make you to walk on the sea. He can make a path in the sea and make you to walk on the dry land. And if required, God can make you to walk over the sea. God can make you to walk over the waters. Hallelujah. Did God make people to walk on the waters? Yes. He made Peter to walk on the waters. Can we just go to that place? This is found in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 14. Can somebody read in verse uh, uh, 25 onwards? And in the fourth watch, watch of the night, he came to, to them walking on the sea. But when, they, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Amen. Amen. And the word says, take heart, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And then the next word says, Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on water. And then it says, Jesus is saying, come. He, he said, then Peter got down all out of the boat and walked on water and came towards Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the situation is they're about to sink. Jesus, who said, go ahead of me, he sent them ahead. But we read in the passage, uh, you know, in different gospels, Jesus, even though he had sent them ahead of him, he was sitting and praying, praying in the presence of the father. I believe he was praying for the disciples as well, who were held up in the midst of a wind and, uh, you know, who are about to get drowned. 
let me tell you when the lord makes us you and me to walk in the new paths with new beginnings uh, when we reposition ourselves uh, let me tell you he's not going to leave you and me alone when the winds and the waves come he's going to ensure that he's going to come walking on the waters not only that when peter requested god jesus can i also walk can i also walk on the waters he says come come this morning time how many of you are going to step out in faith uh, that god is going to do something new how don't expect the, the the waters to part don't expect that the river is going to part don't expect the seas to part there are going to be occasions uh, when he is going to make you to walk on the waters हमेशा इस बात के इंतजार में मत बैठे रहिए कि लाल समुंदर दो भाग हो जाएगा अभी हमेशा इस बात के इंतजार में मत बैठे रहिए कि योर्दन आपके लिए दो भाग हो जाएगा जरूरत पड़ी तो प्रभु आपको पानी पर भी चलाएगा हाले वो आपको पानी पर भी चलाने के लिए सर्वशक्तिमान परमेश्वर है उसकी आज्ञा को सुन लीजिए विश्वास के साथ कदम को आगे बढ़ाइए वो नई शुरुआतों को आपके जीवन में देने वाला सर्वशक्तिमान परमेश्वर है हाल लोहिया हाल लोहिया सो रिसीव द रेवल्यूशन यू माइट थिंक ओ दिस हैपन फॉर द अदर ब्रदर व्हेन ही वेंट थ्रू दैट सिकनेस दिस हैपन फॉर हिम एंड मे बी गॉड इज गोइंग टू दिस डू द सेम थिंग फॉर मी you know that when that sister lost the job this is how she applied it is through this particular website she applied and she got a job and maybe god is going to do the same thing for me no my brother sister expect something greater and expect something different expect expect something mightier because our god is a god who brings revelations who does revelations and let me tell you if you are willing to open yourself up to receive something new from the lord he can bring something new unusually new which has never happened before for anybody else hallelujah hallelujah so the first thing that i mentioned to you was repositioning yourself you need to reposition yourself you need to say i'm not going to dwell on the past paul says something similar you know i told you already paul says i'm not going to dwell on forgetting what is in the past in fact i want to uh, take you to uh, you know uh, uh, philippians again because there's something very powerful he says how he's going to forget the past uh, i'll just read to you from um philippians chapter 3 and verse uh, philippians chapter 3 verse 7 onwards it says but whatever to my what whatever was to my profit i consider loss for the sake of christ and then it says in verse 8 what is what is more i consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of the knowledge of knowing christ jesus my lord for whose sake i have lost all things i consider them rubbish that i may gain christ and be found in him not having a righteous not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law but that which comes from faith in christ you know paul is saying everything that I, that that i that was considered as a gain for me that was considered as something as a great riches i count all that loss for the sake of christ let me tell you there needs to be a renewing of our mind of our understanding even as we step into 2021 where we say i need to receive a revelation there are many things people considered very valuable at the beginning of 2020 they said we have this we have that by by the beginning of or by somewhere in the middle of march everything which was considered as of great value many of those things were of no value many who many who started 2020 complaining that i don't have that in my life i don't have a good house i don't have a good car they all started complaining in 2020 at the beginning of 2020 i don't have those things you know by the end of 2020 they are saying oh i'm i'm thankful that even if i don't have a car i'm a, i have my life with me you know 
See, 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 see the understanding changing. See the way things have changed. And that's exactly what Paul says. Many things which I counted as valuable. When I saw Christ, when, when I received the revelation of Christ, I consider some of those things rubbish. Let me tell you, 2021, the beginning of it, right from the beginning of it, let us take, uh, let us make up our mind that my focus is going to be Christ. Of course, you need house, you need cars, you need money, my dear brothers and sisters, but let, no, this, let not those things try to dominate you. Let not those thoughts try to dominate you. Rather, let your focus be Christ. Let put Christ in the number one place. Let your priority be Christ. Let your priority be Christ. How can this happen? Paul says in the book of Romans, chapter 12, where he says, chapter 12, verse one and two, Dear brethren, I'm reminding you, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. How can this happen? By the renewing of your mind. Can we just read that verse? Or maybe I'll just quickly read it for you. Romans chapter 12. And uh, Romans chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, uh, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Listen to the next verse. This is very important. Do not confirm any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For new things to happen, for new beginnings to happen in your life, there needs to be a renewing that needs to happen inside out. Not outside in, inside out. Paul says there needs to happen a renewing in your mind. If there is going to be a renewing in your mind, it's going to come out. It's going to flow out and that's going to come out from you. By the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what's, what God's will is. His good, pleasing and perfect will. Three adjectives are mentioned over here about God's will. You know, good, pleasing, and perfect will. Three important things mentioned. about. If you really want to know God's will for your life, if you really want to understand God's pleasing will for your life, if you really understand, want to understand what's the perfect way for you in 2021, renew your mind. Ask God to say, ask and let the Lord know that, Lord, I want to receive a new revelation. New revelation that the seas are not going to part. Rather, I'm going to walk over the sea. You know, I'm going to step onto the waters and walk over it. The next thing that I want to mention to you is, I, I, I already told you two points. First, reposition yourself for new things to happen in your life. Second, that I mentioned to you is receive a revelation for new things to happen in your life. The third thing that I want to mention to you is allow God's revolution, you know, allow revolution to happen in your life. Let there be a complete transformation. You receive the revelation in your mind, but let that not stay there. Let that bring about a revolution within you and let that, be tra let that show up in your body also. When you meet a brother or sister who wants to speak about disappointments and discouragements, are you going to nod your head and say, oh yeah, I understand what you go through. Or are you going to say in 2021, my brother, I want to speak life. I want to speak about Jesus. I want to speak about life and life in abundance because Jesus came to give life and life in abundance. I want to speak life into you. I want to speak something new happening in you. Let me tell you, it's not that we don't have disappointments. Paul was a minister, even when he was going through some of his disappointments and uh, a very tough times of his life, uh, he had the good news with him. And that's what he says. Even when we are pressed on from every side, we're not crushed. We're not going to get destroyed. We're not going to be put down. We will continue to carry this good news to others. Would you say to yourself and say, I will continue to speak even when I'm going through disappointments, even when I'm going through dis discouragements. 
I will not allow this enemy to overcome. Rather, I will speak the word of God. I will speak it with power and I will overcome every plans of the enemy. Allow the revelation to turn into a revolution within you. Allow, commit yourself to prayer. Commit yourself to the reading of the word of God. Encourage each other in psalms and hymns, as Paul says, psalms and hymns and encouragements and words from the Bible which could encourage each other. Of course, even in the midst of sicknesses and disappointments that we go through in our lives, there is something that we need to submit ourselves. Let me bring you back to Isaiah chapter 43 and verse uh, uh, 21. There is something that Isaiah is saying very similar. Some, Isaiah is saying, saying something very similar to the children of Israel. What is he saying? Uh, the people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. The people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. Let me tell you, this is where they failed. When Israel was going to be taken into captivity, the praises to God had stopped in Israel. And that's when the Assyrians came and took them as captive into Assyria. And the Lord is reminding, if you want new things to sustain and remain in your life, continue to allow the worship to continue to be raised in your life. When you get up in your mo every morning in this new year, my dear brothers and sisters, let that day start with Christ. Let that day start with a praise and let that st day start with a prayer. Let that st day start with worship, your personal time. Worship is not only for Sundays. Worship is not just for, uh, uh, you know, uh, when we come, when we formally declare, oh, we have a worship service. You need to have a personal time with the Lord. You need to have a dedicated time when you get up from your beds and when you say, thank you, Jesus, for helping me to get up. Thank you, Jesus, sir, that I'm going to face this day. There are many challenges, but I know because you are going to go with me. Pray like Moses and say to him, Lord, I thank you for this new day. I ask your presence to go with me and take me only to those places where you want me to go. You know, Moses prayed, God, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't send us and let that be our prayer also. Don't overtake God. Don't say, okay, God, you be there. I just need to go and meet this person. I need to be with this person. I have that appointment. Ask God to go with you, my dear brothers and sisters, and you will never, never face failures in your life in 2021. Let there be new beginnings. Let there be new beginnings. Come into yourself and say, I'm going to break the vicious circle I'm going to wake, break the vicious circle of failure. I'm going to step in with new things of prayer and commitment and worship and, and, and reading the word of God and speaking by faith. You know, when we start doing new things, expect, expect new things to happen in your life. So uh, even as I speak to you, over here it says, the people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. You know, proclaiming praise in the Bible has different, different ideas. It's not just bringing worship to God. Proclaiming praise has to do with speaking the good news of Christ to others. You know, Israel was supposed to build a temple and they were supposed to worship God or the Yahweh God in their temple. You know, in the temple, very interestingly, they had a porch or in the outer court, there was a place which was dedicated only for the Gentiles. Okay, so if the Gentiles were to come into the temple of God and see the worship of God, and if they wanted to become Jews or followers of Yahweh, it was permitted because when God planned the temple, there was a place for the Gentiles. And we know you know, this place which was for the Gentiles, this, the Jews made into a shopping mall. <laughs> they made it into a shopping mall. And that's why when Jesus came into the temple and when he saw this porch, which was de dedicated for the Gentiles, they made it into a shopping, you know, center. He just kicked it, kicked them out. He just made a whip and he just drove out those people from that place because 
That was the place where the Gentiles were supposed to come and find Yahweh. They were supposed to be a, 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 a nation who would attract others or speak of the good news to others. Let me tell you, when they decided not to do that, God himself sold them into slavery in Assyria, in Babylon. Of course, God restored them. Whenever they cried out, they, God restored them. Let me tell you, in this new year, as an individual, as a family, as a church, would you commit yourself and say, I'm going to be his testimony this year. I'm going to speak, uh, to G speak about Jesus to my friend in my school. I'm going to speak about Jesus at my business place. I'm going to speak about Jesus uh, in, the, in, the, in the bus or the car or you know, whatever public transport you might take. Would you say, I'm going to speak about Jesus to one person? I'm going to speak about Jesus. Let me tell you, when you, this is what the, the Lord wanted of the Israelites. Uh, Isaiah is saying, ask them that they would proclaim my praise. Proclaim my praise is not just in the church, my dear brothers and sisters. Proclaiming praises is in the six days of, of, of our life when we are not even in the church. Proclaiming praises is outside the church also. When you speak about Jesus to somebody and say, somebody going through disappointment, somebody going through sickness, you can say to him, brother, Jesus can heal you. Sister, Jesus can deliver you. That disappointment is going to go. I can pray for you and Jesus is going to do a new thing. Hallelujah. Not just receive new things in your life. Not just walk in new things in your life. Can you bring new things into the life of others also? This morning time, even as I speak to you, I believe the Lord has spoken uh, 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 to you and there is something that the Lord is already doing in your life. हम नई बातों की अपेक्षा कर कर बैठे हैं कि हमारे जीवन में नई बातें हों नई बातें होने हैं आपके जीवन में होने की आप अपेक्षा आप कर रहे हैं तो सबसे पहले आपको पुरानी बातों को भुलाना होगा कौन सी बातों को भुलाना होगा सब बातों को भुलाने के लिए नहीं कहा गया है जो शत्रु ने आपके कानों में बोला है जो कड़वी बातें आपके जीवन में हुई हैं उन सबको आप भुला दीजिए और नई बातों के लिए अपने आप को तैयार कीजिए उस स्थान पर रखिए जहां से आपको एक नई शुरुआत मिलेगी रीपोजिशन योरसेल्फ दूसरी बात जो, जो मैंने आपको बताया परमेश्वर से एक दर्शन को पाइए एक रेवलेशन को पाइए एक दर्शन को पाइए कि प्रभु मेरे लिए अद्भुत कामों को कर सकता है मेरे लिए विचित्र काम कर सकता है चमत्कारों को कर सकता है जो मेरे भाई के लिए बहन के लिए किया उसी बात की अपेक्षा कर कर मत बैठिए अरे इजरायलियों को ऐसे चलाया था मेरे को भी प्रभु ऐसे चलाएगा नहीं प्रभु आपको इससे भी बड़े तरीके से इससे भी अद्भुत तरीके से आपको चला सकता है हाल उस बात की अपेक्षा करिए तीसरा आपके मन के अंदर जो बातें हुई हैं जो परिवर्तन जो दर्शन आपने पाया है वो आपके जीवन में भी परिवर्तित आपके चाल चलन में आपके बोल चाल में आपके विश्वास में आपके जो मुंह से आप बोलेंगे इस नए वर्ष में होने पाए आशीष का वचन आशा का वचन आप दूसरों को बांटने पाए ये सब बातें जब आप करने को तैयार हो जाएंगे अपने प्रार्थना जीवन को अपने अपने आराधना के जीवन को अपने वचन पढ़ने के जीवन को इन सब बातों को जरा परिवर्तित करके देखिए दूसरों को जरा सुसमाचार बांटने की कोशिश कीजिए मैं बताता हूं भाइयों बहनों ना केवल आपका जीवन आपका पारिवारिक जीवन आपकी कलीसिया भी आपसे आशीष पाने पाएगी आपका जीवन बदलने पाएगा नई शुरुआतों में नई बातों में मैं ये नहीं कह रहा कि आने वाले समय कोरोना कल को ही खत्म होने वाला है नहीं मैं बताता हूं सारी परेशानियां या इससे भी बड़ी परेशानियां भी आपके चारों तरफ होने पाए लेकिन उसके बीच में अगर आप परमेश्वर पर अपने विश्वास को रखने वाले व्यक्ति हैं नो मैटर हाउ बिग और हाउ टेरेबल और हाउ ट्रबलसम दिस ईयर कुड बी नॉट दैट एवरीथिंग इज गोइंग टू बी फाइन इन दिस टू आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू प्रोमिस यू फॉर दैट गॉड नेवर प्रोमिस यू फॉर दैट यू नो 2021 might even bring more dangerous situations or more troublesome situations or may or may not be. But in the midst of all this, where do you and I stand for the Lord? That is what is more important. If you are in Christ, you are like a person who is standing on that rock, which will never be shaken. And if you are standing on that, on that rock, be assured, 
you will never be shaken. Be reminded, Jesus reminds of two people who build their houses. I'll just mention that and I'll close with that. Jesus reminds of two people who build their houses. One person, he built his house on the sand. The other person, he built his house on the rock. The person who built his house on the sand and the person who built his house on the rock, both had the same situations in their life. Both faced with the rain, both faced with the wind. They had the same kind of testing. Let me tell you, if you are a person who stands on Christ, this time or in 2020, there were many who are still, you know, going through that same situation. We also face that situation. It's only because we were in Christ or we were willing to believe in Christ and his word, his promises, hold on to his promises that we could carry on. Both the people, both the houses face the same difficulties. The wind, the waves, Oh, sorry, the wind and the rain coming down. But the house on the sand got destroyed. Let me tell you, somebody without Jesus will definitely get destroyed. But somebody who has himself placed on that rock, be assured, winds and rains and all kinds of situations will come, but you're going to stand. You're going to remain. You're going to sustain through all those situations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I believe whatever the Lord has laid upon my heart, I have brought it to you. And I definitely believe God has spoken to some of you. I'm going to take a moment to pray with you before uh, uh, you know, I hand over back to Pastor. I'm going to take a moment to pray with you. And this morning time, I request every brother and sister to join with me wholeheartedly. If you are expecting something new to happen in your life, if you are waiting for a new beginning to hap happen in your life, if you are expecting that Lord should bring something new in your life, would you change yourself? How to change yourself? Forget what is in the past and set your goals right. Paul says, I'm forgetting what is behind. My goal is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Let there be a realigning and repositioning. Let there be a prioritizing of things in your life. What is of greater priority? What is of greater priority? I will request you to close your eyes. Submit yourself into the wonderful hands of God. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we just thank you and praise you for this wonderful time that you're giving us, O oh God. Lord, we want to realign ourselves, O oh God. We want to, re 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 want to reposition ourselves, O oh God. Let there be a change in our understanding. I'm not going to do uh, uh, somebody, uh, Lord, let it not be a tooth for a tooth. Uh, uh, Lord, I want to leave those old ways and paths. Help me to have a heart of forgiveness. A heart which is willing to uh, think out of the box and be willing to be positioned where you want me to be. Lord, help me to receive a greater revelation that you can do greater and mightier things, O oh God. Help me not to expect to sit with the expectation that you're going to do something old or something which you did for something else. I know God, you are a God who can do greater things, new things. We read in the word of God that you have plans for us, plans to prosper us, give us a hope and a future, not to harm us. God. Again, we read in the word of God that those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They, they shall rise up with wings like the eagles. Yes, O Lord. We have done a time of waiting in 2020 when uh, as individuals and families and uh, as, as a church, we have been waiting in the presence of God to see a change happening in this world. Yes, Lord, in this country, Lord, we, we know that you are going to do something new and help us to step into that uh, by faith of God. Help us to receive that revelation. Help us the, uh, to receive that for our individual lives, uh, for our family lives uh, and for our church of God. Something greater, something mightier, oh God, where we can see people running and coming to the church and say, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Yes, O oh Lord, help us to prepare ourselves for that. Equip ourselves with the word and with prayer and with the worship to see greater number of people coming into the church in this new year, oh God. Help us to revolutionize ourselves, oh God, with our words, with our deeds and actions by stepping out in faith 
not speaking words of disappointment and even to those who are disappointment uh, disappointed help us to speak words of hope and faith into the lives of all pyare pita apne aap ko ek nayi jagah pe ek nayi sthan pe la kar reposition karne ke liye aapka darshan paane ke liye aur keval utna hi nahi ek bahut bade parivartan ko jo hamare man se shuru ho kar hamare shareeron mein bhi वो दिखने पाए इसके लिए हम अपने आप को समर्पित करते हैं प्यारे पिता इस कलीसिया को आशीष देते हैं लॉर्ड वी प्रे फॉर द चर्च दैट यू बेस्ट ऑफ योर ब्लेसिंग हाल एलू या स्पिरिट ऑफ गॉड लेट योर माई टी थिंग्स एट योर माई टी थिंग्स रखमाना गाउडा रे बशंदल वही खबा बारा रे गमा राजा रे बशंदल यस लॉर्ड लेट देर बी रिन्यूइंग इन एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ गॉड थैंक यू फॉर यूर डूइंग इट लॉर्ड योर वर्ड से क्लेम दैट एज अ प्रोमिस you are going to do a new thing and it springs forth now and we want to understand that oh god we thank you for speaking to us we want to give you all the glory in the name of jesus we ask and pray amen god bless you all